my gosh. There's so much stuff. We had some issues with our bilge where it wasn't turning on. This one doesn't seem to be working quite so well either. So I've been trying to wedge it out with a screwdriver and I've broken it. So I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that this is actually going to work after I put it back together and it's not going to be pissing out water. So this needs to go in perfectly straight. I'm trying to figure out our route for the next couple of days. That's fair, I love you with my eye. It's amazing how much stuff you can fit in two backpacks and a couple bags. We're provisioned for a good long time now. Now let's get this all off our bags and onto the boat, find some storage for it. Uh, high tide sucks. Ugh. crazy I never thought we could fit so much stuff in our backpacks I'm not the biggest fan of Walmart as a corporation but it seems to be the best place to shop I mean all of these groceries were like 200 bucks and we are like seriously provisioned with cheese and just like tons of veggies so many goodies my favorite pretzel filled or peanut butter filled pretzels and just tons of stuff we even got ourselves an anchor some Lucas for our fuel Anyway, now we have the hard job of trying to put all this away and find little nooks for it because otherwise we're going to have to deal with this everywhere. So let's get this done. So we got a mess here of cans. We started provisioning as we already told you, but then we noticed there was some water in here. Or we're thinking it's condensation. It's pretty nasty water, but we did taste it just to see if it was salty. And it doesn't seem salty like salt water. So I'm thinking, we're both thinking it's condensation. The other option is there's a, a fresh water line back here that we have to take, we'll have to take a look at and make sure there's no drips coming from that. But if it was dripping, it probably would be a lot worse than this. So we're thinking that's just a lot of condensation because we haven't checked the bottom of this in a while. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Wow. I didn't think we would fit quite so many things in here. 
But as you can tell, there's a decent amount of condensation that's built up in there. Some of the cans are a little rusty, so that's why the water's red. But yeah, Alex taking off all our labels and labeling the cans so we stay bug free since 93. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to try to find room for all this again. Darn it. It was so neat in there. Not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just checking the wiring here and we had some issues with our bilge where it wasn't turning on. We thought it was the pipe so we replaced the pipe with a pipe we were going to use for our second bilge. But then we were still having a problem. So then we thought maybe the pipe was kinked. Turns out we had too much voltage drop across the, the lines going to the little float thing here. And when we turned on the switch, the manual switch for the bilge, the bilge worked fine. So then that told me, well, there was just a problem with the, sw the, the little float switch. So now I'm just trying to figure out exactly where the problem is and get rid of any of the wires that we're having trouble with. So hopefully the float will work and we can eventually hook up the second bilge pump as our backup for if that one fails. So things are looking well good because I was pretty frustrated with the way the bilge was turning out since I had already fixed it once. I gotta hate fixing things multiple times. <laughs> we replaced our little uh, float here because we realized that, well, what happens is to turn on our, our bilge pump th with the float, the power actually has to go flow through the float and then into the bilge pump. And the old float had way too much, I think, corrosion or something inside, so it wasn't working. But this is a cheap float from Walmart, and this one doesn't seem to be working quite so well either. It works, but it, it's not, not consistent. I don't know why it's not going off. Maybe I blew a fuse. I'm not sure what's going on, but it is not going off right now. So from what I can gather, this float is just a piece of junk. It, uh, it's better than the other one, it has less resistance, so we actually get water flowing out the outside when it does work. So you may want to save money, just like we did, uh, on a bilge pump float. And this is a very cheap bilge pump float from Walmart. Uh, we've got the pack with the float and the bilge pump. The bilge pump itself seems like it's okay, but the float is complete garbage for a few reasons. Um, I mean, it's only a $10 float, so that comparing, it's like four times more expensive for like a, a rule one, which is a really good float. But um, yeah, I took off the cap of this Shoreline Marine. It's a piece of junk. And first off, this little ball bearing is supposed to sit right in here. And when you lift the float up, it's supposed to go and make the connection and just trip this little switch here. And when it comes down, ideally it's supposed to come all the way down. So what a lot of people are having trouble with is the float stays, I, the float comes down, but then the ball bearing stays in this position, which keeps the, the switch on. Now that's if the switch hasn't been corroded and completely useless because I've only had the, I installed this, it worked one time. And now even without the ball bearing, the switch doesn't work there. You can see the connections. You might not be able to see it, but they're completely corroded and useless so this little switch is not designed at all for marine use you can hear it clicking but it, it doesn't make a connection the other problem is this little ball bearing is just a terrible design because it doesn't sit in this little spot like it's supposed to it actually gets lifted sometimes and sits there i don't know how because it's not even enough space really to fit there but anyway it doesn't do the job as it's supposed to so your pump is either going to get stuck in the on position or it won't turn on when you need it to uh, obviously either of those situations are terrible because you'll either if it's on all the time you're gonna kill your battery and probably burn out your pump or if it doesn't turn on you're probably going to sink your boat so either one of those scenarios is terrible and not worth saving the $30 you save by buying this cheap one so buy the good one whichever brand you want but just make sure it's not from Walmart and this piece of junk <laughs> 
anyway, when I bypass the float entirely, if you look down here, um, these are the two wires going to the float. They were connected here and here. If I touch them together, we get the pump working. So that's that tells me that the float is not working and there's an issue with it. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But for now, we'll just show you how much more flow goes out the bilge pump when I connect these two. When the float is actually working, you'll see that it doesn't just trickle out like it, like it did before, it actually pumps it overboard like shit. The little seal on the front end here of the bearing seems to be gone in between the two, uh, well in between the two bearings, sorry. Um, we're not leaking from the back, but there's a drip that's coming from like down here and it's splashing salt all over the engine and stuff. So I want to nip it in the butt. So I think it's just this little guy here that a friendly boater gave us. So hoping that this is going to solve the problem and hopefully it's the right part. <laughs> So I thought I could access the bearings and the little uh, bushing there from this side, but it seems like there's no, no pin or anything. And the clevis pin here, I think that's what it's called, is on this side holding the bearings in. So it was a little bit tricky getting this off, but we got it. Now I just got to take that off and hopefully everything's going to come out. Well, that clevis pin was not fun to get out with just needle nose. I see why people actually have a special tool for it. Now I'm just trying to get this uh, this shaft right out. Try this. So really not a good day today. I just found the seal that's in here. It's seized in there. So I've been trying to wedge it out with a screwdriver and I've broken it. And it's still wedged in there. And I didn't check closely enough, but the one that was given to me has too big of a shaft hole. So it's not even going to work. So, and we're not close to a marine store. So that was really stupid of me. Now we have to figure out a solution or I have to slap it together and hope it doesn't leak like a complete sieve all over everything. Not super stoked at all right now. Wow. The seal's pretty darn destroyed. I jammed a screwdriver basically through the thing trying to get it out because it's seized to the side of the pump. Um, but when I put the shaft in and just let water sit in here, it seems like it's so it's not leaking. Obviously there's no pressure, so the big test is going to be to see if it leaks when I put it all back together, which is a big pain in the butt, really, but at least now I know how this thing works. And I learned to never try to take something out with force, even if it's jammed in there, unless you're 100% sure that you've got the right part. Because we just called around and it's going to be at least a few days, probably a week by the time we could actually get the part. So I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that this is actually going to work after I put it back together and it's not going to be pissing out water. Because if it is, we're probably going to be stuck here for a week. Let's hope. Ah, it's already leaking. kind of waiting on some boat parts so we're stuck here for a couple days unplanned visit for a longer duration here at Portsmouth but hopefully the parts will be delivered tomorrow and we'll be ready to go so here's the vent for our crankcase as far as it was told so I'm gonna take a look apparently there's a bit of a filter in here and I have a feeling it may be clogged because we're, when the engine is running and we pull the dipstick, we get spurt back. Um, and it's just something I've never checked before, so I'm kind of curious what's going on in here. So let's see. So this was the cap. Looks like there's some sort of baffle thing here. Um, there actually isn't any sort of filter in it, so I assume the oil just gets uh, stopped from going into the air system with this. Um, but yeah, anyway, and learning stuff every day. So yeah, this is uh, not exactly what I expected, but at least it's not clogged. So I can put this back together and we should be good. Well, it looks like we're flooded this morning. 
and I pray the water was a little higher just just a little bit ago really <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have to walk through water to get off the boat and it's really cold Ooh. so I might just eat some breakfast wait out the tides going out anyways so we've been here a lot longer than we had initially planned but our motor part is finally here our oil seal for our pump so let's go get it over at the visitor center hopefully it's the right one it's a big box for a small part but I'm happy we got it let's go put it in well this is the little part that we've been waiting for all this time would have been a good thing to have as a spare. We would have ordered a second one if they had a second one, but they don't. So we'll have to order another one on eBay or something or Amazon. But yeah, now we got the right part, I'm pretty sure. So let's take apart that water pump and get it figured out. All right, well, we got the impeller side off here, but that's not the, the business end that we need to get to. We need to get the area in here. And that means taking off this guy here. Uh, we've had some difficulty just holding on to the, the wheel and trying to crank this open because it's seized on there pretty good. So we found some, some uh, use out of just putting some vice grips on the pulley here just so it holds it in place and then we're free to turn it and loosen the bolt. So we got this all ready to go. Hopefully the seal works out well and we have no more problems because I'm ready to leave this place. <laughs> so you see this rubber bit here. There's actually a metal ring on the inside. And again, thanks to my diesel mechanic on call, Graham, he told me that I could give it a tap from this side and get it out. And it seems like it's already loosened off the one side. So I'm gonna continue that doing that over here. And let's see if we can get it out. So I just got a flat head, uh, sorry, uh, Robertson to not damage things too much. Just giving it a light tap so I don't scratch the housing too much. Let's see. It's starting to come out. Oh, look at that! Woohoo! Five days later in Portsmouth. Well then. Awesome. Are we leaving tomorrow, maybe? I hope so. That's sweet. So we really should get some dielectric grease, but we don't have any right now. Um, so we're using some marine grease. It doesn't say anything about it not being bad for rubber. So we're going to give it a try. But we're just going to give it a thin coating on the inside here. Alright, so this needs to go in perfectly straight. So I'm going to drop it in here. Oh, not put it in upside down. I'm trying to figure out our route for the next couple of days. So right now we're at mile zero of the ICW, really exciting. And there's two options. You either do the Virginia cut, which is much deeper and actually I've gotten to mix things of it. Either it's faster or slower, so I have no idea. Or the other option, which is the Dismal Swamp, seems gorgeous but it's a little bit more shallow. So, and there's two locks. So right now I'm just trying to figure out a little bit the bridges because we have to go under bridges. So you've got to call them and get through them. And apparently they all have different kind of schedules. And the first one that we're gonna have to go through, it's like close during rush hours. And it's about an hour from here. So a little bit of logistics to try to make it through and go to the, the small swamps.